going. Dr. Doug Weiser is president of the National Spine and Pain Centers, which is the largest private pain management practice in the country. Dr. Weiser, good to see you. I want to tell the audience up front, I know you and of your practice because my ex-husband happens to be one of your partners. Uh, and I've received your email and your particular warning after you saw what the feds are reimbursing you for your practice and your procedures, which include some very fancy things like sticking needles in people's spines. Tell us what the cuts are and why you're objecting. Thanks, Megan, for having us. Um, you know, basically put, Medicare is looking for ways to save some money uh, on physician reimbursements. And uh, we are working collaboratively with CMS to try to make some recommended uh, cuts responsibly that still allow patients access to care. And in our centers, uh, we, we offer a more cost-effective cost effective alternative, uh, alternative to hospital care, including office procedure suites and ambulatory surgery centers that allow us to perform sophisticated, minimally invasive uh, spine and you don't procedures. Have to go you can go, go down the road, yeah. go see your doctor, and the next thing you know, you're getting a needle in your spine, you're getting concrete in your spine. You guys do all sorts of crazy stuff, but you keep That's people right. out of the hospital. But tell us about the cuts and why you claim they're so dire. Well, Medicare has proposed cuts that, on average, uh, come out to about 24%, but in particular, pain management can range as high as 58% for basic epidurals, for herniated discs, or spinal stenosis when people have sciatica or leg pain related to a nerve compression. And that's really not sustainable at the office setting. We're already providing care, you know, just over cost and 58% cut over and above the mandated electronic medical records and the cost of staying in business will really force a lot of us, nearly 40% of pain providers who work in the office setting, uh, to consider whether or not that's viable going forward. Why is there an incentive? Because I know you say, in, you reached out to your patients uh, and said, contact your congressman, object to this, because this is going to force uh, some doctors out of business. And in your letter, you say there is, they are trying to push doctors who are in private practice out of private practice and, and patients over to the hospital setting. Why would the law want to do that? Why would the government want to do that? You know, it's difficult to really ascertain the motive, but one can't help but be skeptical that the goal here is a nationalized system. On the one hand, the government says that they want to re reduce cost of health care. We offer the lowest uh, form of care for painful spinal conditions, and yet they cut us the deepest as opposed to our hospital systems that have a much more expensive overhead and facility fee associated with what we do. So the, the question that begs to be answered is whether or not hospital lobbyists are still working behind the scenes with congressional leaders and that's what's forcing the hand, or more likely that there's just a generalized push towards a nationalized system like Canada or England, and this will force doctors to either sell to the hospital or go out of business. And once we get down to a, to a single operating system of a hospital employing all doctors, that's when we get closer to a government-run health care system. How, to, to your critics, is pain management, I know, is one of the few specialties that hasn't, that still gets decent reimbursement rates from Medicare, but that's now being cut. But some of the examples I know, you give lumbar epidurals, so that's, that's the, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the low back, sticking the needle in, and then the cervical epidurals, which is higher. Give us an example of the rates that have now been cut for you, just so the audience has a feel. Yeah, just as an example for cervical injections that were averaging somewhere around $250, in 2013, in uh, 2014, the suggestion is $117. And in the low back, similar, like $247 reduced to $215. And again, those are 51 to 58% cuts. That's really not sustainable uh, given our overheads. I mean, we're not capturing any fee for running a facility typically in our office. We do have surgical centers in, our, in some of our states, but that fee pales in comparison to what the hospital would recoup for their overhead. Yeah, wow. Uh, and I know it, the, the spinal stimulation procedure got cut by thousands and thousands of dollars, so we'll see. We'll see where this goes. Yeah. Dr. Weiser, good to see you.